Alrighty guys, welcome, welcome. We are here to do another live unboxing. This one, as you can see, is Holland 44. Game designed by Mark Semenich and produced by GMT Games. You can see it's a one and a half inch box. It's a very light box, actually. Um, so obviously, Holland 44 is Operation Market Garden. Holland 44 is a two-player game depicting the Allies' combined ground and airborne attack in the Netherlands during World War II, which is codenamed Operation Market Garden. This during plan to grab, grab critical bridges across the Netherlands had the potential of opening up a clear road into Germany. However, remnants of several battered German divisions were in their area and were able to slow the ground offensive and almost totally destroy the British 1st Airborne Division. The Allied offensive was a failure. In this game, you have the opportunity to change history and study the campaign in detail. Did it have a chance to succeed? Could things have been done differently? You decide. Each turn represents about eight hours. Each unit are battalions, although there are many company-sized German units. The game uses the simple move-fight supply system developed in Normandy 44 and Ardennes 44. Important elements like supply... Troop quality, tank quality, artillery support, and command and control are all reflected in the game. Special rules for airborne landings, airborne supply, bridge destruction, and repair are also included. The game covers the first critical seven days of the battle with a 20-turn campaign game and an 11-turn tournament scenario. Uh, so, the units are battalions, two players, time is three days per turn a.m. a p.m. and a night turn the map is two kilometers in hexes complexity is six out of nine which is medium and solitaire suitability is seven out of nine which is high of course the game is produced by GMT and the game developed by Mark Semenich art director is Roger McGowan map and counter art is Mark Seminitz. Alrighty, so let's open the box and see what's inside. Oh no, it's not new and shrink anymore. Damn. Ah. Ah. Tony, what's going on, man? We'll see you at 4 o'clock. Don't forget, guys, 4 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. We'll be having a live chat with our good friend Tony's Board Life. So let's see what's inside of Holland 44. So we have our GMT baggies. We have two six-sided dice. One red, one gray. We have errata. The following should be added to the scenario at start instructions. Four of the five bridges along the Bochette Hetanol's canal start the game blown. So that's kind of important. Of course, our game was checked by Deb over there at GMT. So thank you, Deb. Appreciate it. We have the rules of play. Glossy, full color, color rule book. Weighs in at 40 pages. Uh, we have the German reinforcement schedule, the Allied reinforcement schedule. Summary of important events, designer notes. Looks like a nice example of play. Very nice example of play. That's great. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. <clears throat> Scenarios. Um, we have the short game and the campaign game. Optional rules, how to win, special rules, unknown units, breakdown, emerging units, airborne landings, reinforcement and entry, artillery units, disruption and recovery, advance after combat, breakthrough combat, retreats, determined defense, combat results, <coughs> combat, combat modifiers, zones of control, and Zoc bonds. Movement, 
bridge demolition and repair, stacking, weather, sequence of play, content, and introduction. Full color. Um, very sturdy, thick pages for the rule book. Very nice. Uh, we should probably put this inside the rule book so we don't accidentally lose that. All right, so we got a setup card for the Germans. One sided. Have the player A card, which has the combat result table, combat modifier, explanations of the results, bridge, bridge demolition, airborne landing table, disengagement table, and determined defense table. <clears throat> Looks like a second copy. Oh, on the back side is the terrain effects chart. Then we have, looks like two counter sheets. So you're going to have Germans, SS, looks like Americans, British. And I'm not sure what these little braille ones would be over here. That's interesting. Uh, second counter sheet, some more British, a few more Americans, some more miscellaneous counters there, and of course your admin counters, take a look at some of the counters there, so you can see what they look like. Admin counters. All right, and of course we have interesting two looks like two maps. Uh, this okay, so one full size map sheet, which is going to be twenty two by thirty four, and then they have one map section which is 17 by 22, two counter sheets of counters, two identical play cards, one scenario book, one rule book, and two dice. All righty. So let's take a look at the map. So this is a smaller map. It actually fits nicely on my table. <laughs> Here, of course, there's Arnhem there and Hi Megan. And the dreaded woods of destruction over there. Good quality coloring of the map. It's on a nice uh, kind of slicky, um, glossy paper, which is nice. Looks really good. I'm sure, what all the all the little dots must be little villages or whatever. Okay. Bunch of marsh, or I'm not sure if that's marsh or marsh or what is that? What is that? That is called uh, podler, pod podler. Marsh is something different, actually. Marsh is this is marsh here. This is podler, potter, podler. Marsh woods, town, city, and clear are your different terrain types. Open up the bigger map now. You probably won't be able to get it all in the view, but you'll get to check it out. And I'm assuming this... Ugh. This other map is gonna butt up. Aha. Uh, uh -huh. Yeah, so, oh, geez, I tore my map. Great. So this is going to go on the bottom edge of this other map like that. Great. All right, so, oh, Jesus, doing a terrible job. Ripping my map here. All right, so... Here's Eindhoven down here. Here is the King's Highway. 
And of course you have all of your different uh, information tracks on the map down here at the bottom. Let's see if I can see. So you got your weather track, airborne replacement tracks, airborne replacements, sequence of play, German remnant display, turn record track, traffic markers, air units, moved units, Looks like it goes from September 17th, the PM turn, to September 23rd, the night turn. This is not actually, again, for me, it's easier to go this way across my table. I could actually almost fit this, because it's, except for... Right now, we currently have another game still set up over there, which I need to try and finish sometime soon. Can't believe I tore my map. Ugh. Look at that. Right there on that. It's on the same side. Anywho, uh, yeah, nice. And then this is just the top section, so it's going to be long and thin map. Just keep that in mind. Would have liked a mounted map, but you know, whatever. Counters. I don't think these are half inch counters, but they look slightly bigger than the half inch. Maybe 9 16 It does not say on the, the box, it just says two counter sheets. It doesn't say the size of the counter sheets. But they, I believe these are bigger than the half inch counters. Uh, let's get out a half, half inch counter and take a look. Ugh. Let's take a look. Yeah, these are bigger than the half inch counters for sure. They're probably 9 16th inch. You kind of see. Slightly bigger, not huge, but at least they're not half inch counters. Thank God for that. <laughs> if you watched our episode yesterday, you'll know exactly what I'm talking about. <sighs> so nice, nicer, bigger counters, easier to see. Um, looks like these are not going to punch out really easily, like the counters in Stalingrad 42, unfortunately. You're going to have to actually cut those ones out. Bummer, but still not bad, not bad at all. Good looking counters. The numbers and everything stand out pretty well. That's good. Everything seems to be uh, lined up pretty good. Nothing's off centered or anything. It is on the, looks like it feels like it's on the thinner um, card stock. I know GMT has gone to thicker uh, cardstock, but this one seems to be part of the thinner. You can just feel the, the wiggleness of it compared to the last couple we've opened up, which is unfortunate. Uh, maybe for cost measures, but again, I would rather pay a little bit more to get thicker counters, mounted maps. I don't know if they have actually a mounted map for this game. I don't remember seeing it. I'll have to go back to the GMT website and check it out. But uh, this gives you your setup, which is nice. And shows you what the counters are. That's always a good thing. Rules of play and the scenario. There is no scenario book, right? 
what's uh, the scenario card and then one rule book yes yeah, so the scenarios are built into the rule book so there's only really to be honest we're talking about rules you're talking about example of play how to win so you're talking 21 pages of rules and you know big thick or big um, text with plenty of pictures and examples so it's not really that bad you could probably read through this section in about half an hour and maybe an hour and you'd be up and ready to play so very nice and the extended sequence of play on the back which is nice you can have that out if you're gonna have your rule book there you go that is Rough Swordsman, how you doing, buddy? Good to see you guys. Don't forget, 4 o'clock today. I sent you guys an email if you haven't checked your email yet, but uh, just a reminder. If you got something that comes up, just let me know. Um, but yeah, guys, 4 o'clock, we'll be having a chat with Rough Swordsman Wargamer and Tony's Board Life. So there you go. That is Holland 44. Um... I wanted to get this one before it goes out of print. It's been out for a while. Um, I was hoping to pick it up from Iterian Hobbyist when he was condensing some of his uh, games, but he ended up trading it away. So then I was like, well, I just have to order it, I guess, which is fine. Um, so a little bit bigger counters, not the half inch counters. Yay for us. Yay. I won't have to go into that discussion again. I mean, this should be the minimum size companies make the counters. Although they're on the smaller, thinner cardstock. Nice maps, so, but not mounted. And they did seem to tear pretty easy, to be honest. Uh, maybe it was the way it was folded or whatever, but I ended up tearing a couple of the bigger sheet of, you know, along one of the tears. This is kind of a thinner paper. So if they can make a mounted map for us, that'd be great. Be really good. I'd be happy with that. <laughs> oh, yes, they do, to, uh, um, Rough Swordsman says. So I'm going to be uh, punching these counters out, cutting them out, and then clipping them. They don't. Yeah, these are not like the Stalingrad one where you're going to be able to just punch through a hole and you're going to have to actually cut these out it's a little bit longer to get them cut out but now look forward to trying Holland 44 for you guys and giving it a whirl so long and thin map which might work on my desk unfortunately the map will be like this on my desk long and thin this way because I, I don't have as much room this way as I do this way as you can see, I got I got area over there, and I got a little bit of area over here. I just don't have as much area this way. As you can see, there's my computer or my uh, monitor. So yeah, it's, it seems like the map bigger, uh, and even though there's two sections, part of it overlaps, and this section right here overlaps, so you don't end up having like one map right on the other map it's gonna it's gonna go over you know lay over the other map so it's not quite as big as it would have been there you go holland 44 hardly anyone has a room uh room for that map vertically <laughs> that's true that would be a uh hey jade how are you doing, buddy? Good to see you. Um, yeah, that would be true. I mean, if you're going to keep it vertical on your table here, you need a wide table. That is for sure. But yeah, this one uh, this one looks pretty manageable. We are playing Normandy 44 uh, with Vassal because I don't actually have the Normandy game. I'm waiting for the reprint to come out. Shouldn't be too much longer, hopefully. Probably by the end of the year, I would hope. Um... So this might be one to dabble into because I like the pair drop system and uh, 
you know, the unpredictability about where your units are going to land and stuff. So maybe, uh, maybe this might be the next one. Although I am looking at East Front action. I'm looking at Stalingrad 42 or something like that. But I don't, I'm not sure yet exactly what we're going to be doing next. We got to finish up our Panzer battle and get that out, hacked up and moved out of the way. So I might actually be doing that um, before our live stream today at four o'clock. I don't know if I mentioned that. Good morning, Charles. So Charles, um, you mentioned yesterday, and I think you exited out of the uh, live stream before everyone had a chance. You had mentioned yesterday that you ended up picking up uh, Ukraine 43, and um, and then you decided that you had to get a couple things with it so that you didn't have to pay for the shipping costs. So people were wondering what other games you picked up besides Ukraine 43, so... I said, next time I see Charles, I'll ask him. So, uh, Charles, if you, if you, uh, you know, me and Rough Swordsman, <laughs> we, we're the kind of people that uh, we like spending people's money. So if you, if you don't like buying lots of things, probably don't watch our videos because <laughs> me and Rough Swordsman are like, if we see something we want, we just get it. So, and then people see us get it, and then they get inspired to get it. And then Charles is like, I really want to get this, uh, wait for the second edition, but I can get the first edition. Do you guys think I should get the first edition? And everybody's like, yeah, what are you waiting for? If you want the game, go get the game. Uh, there's a second edition of Normandy 44 in the shrink wrap on eBay I'm watching. Oh, nice. Yeah, I, I thought about maybe picking it up, but I'm like, it's kind of stupid because I've got the reprint edition coming for, and, and the P500 on GMT. I could just wait for the new edition. I don't see, I don't think it makes sense. I'm actually getting the mounted, the mounted uh, map board. In fact, if we go, uh, let's go over to GMT real quick. Uh, Let's see if I can uh, share my little screen here. Uh, let's see here. T -t -t Desktop. There we go. All right. So I just got an email. They uh, sent my Flying Colors, third edition. Uh, this one here. Third ed deluxe edition printed. Uh, they just shipped it out yesterday. So it'll be here in a couple days. So that, those games are just released. We go to the P500. <clears throat> uh, you can see coming up the Normandy mounted map is coming up, which is great because I got that on pre order. Wait, what? Why doesn't it? Oh, because I might not be logged in. Is this. Yeah. Okay, now it should show. Okay. I was like, wait a minute. I know I got that on pre order. Uh, so the mounted maps are coming up. Yeah, see, I've ordered one of these. Okay, so got the mounted map ordered. So that'll probably be coming out here in the next group or so. So September, October. They've got uh, quite a few there. And then after that, they've got their regular Normandy 44 coming. Where? Right there. And I've got one of those ordered. So, I have to wait for this to move up the chain. I'm hoping by the end of the year. Um, and I am getting the mounted map. Because I don't think this comes with the mounted map. Let's just make sure. because uh, This printing will be the identical to the second printing. Except that any known errata will be corrected. Yeah, it's just going to come with the regular map. And the two counter sheets, the rule book, five player A card, and a six sided die. Yeah, so I'm looking forward to getting Normandy 44, but it just doesn't make sense for me to get the second edition when the third edition is pretty close to coming out. Pretty close to coming out.
So, now if you're a Normandy 44 guy, you got the mounted maps coming up probably in the next group. Maybe, depending on when, you know, these, according to GMT, all these games are at the printer. Um, so I don't know when, when this will ship, but it should ship pretty soon. And then the next group, these guys will move up once they can get these out of the printer. Now it depends because there's a lot. Look how many there is here. Look at that. Let's count them up. There it is. 2, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, 45, 50, 55. So there's 55 games. 55 games that have made the cut and are in final art and development. Which means some of these games will move up into the at the printer group. Now, of the 55, they're not going to move up all 55. They're only going to move up maybe 10, 11, 12, 13, somewhere in there. So if, if Normandy 44 makes the cut and moves up into this group, we could get it by the end of the year. If it doesn't, if they decide to make some of these other ones move up, then we could be a little bit longer. But I have a feeling because Normandy 44 is a pretty popular game that they're going to they're gonna move it up. Uh, what's, what's the... Uh, oh, 558. Okay, well. I don't know. I don't know. Looking forward to getting it. But, you know, I guess my whole discussion was, <laughs> you know... Um, I don't see me buying the second edition when the third edition will be out sometime pretty soonish. Pretty soonish. I mean, you know, might be a couple more months. So I don't. I mean, even if I could find the second edition at pretty cheap, it's kind of for me. It seems like a waste of money. Seems like a waste of money because you're gonna you're gonna have the uh, you're gonna have the opportunity to get the the newer edition pretty soon. Uh, let me check out the chat here. Um, waiting for flying cars to arrive in the UK. Colonial Twilight, the French Algerian Wars, and Beneath the Mediterranean, says Charles. Okay, so you got, uh, she so picked up those three. Because I know um, coin series title and a great narrative U boat game. Yes. Uh, I have the Hunters and Silent Victory, great games. Only have played Silent Victory. Playing for a weekend today, full of full of sigh, full of uh, full of I am. Sunday, hopefully, hunters. Yeah, hunters. Uh, we did a we did a um, what was it? Tabletop simulator, which we're still in the process of doing. If, if I get to it, problem with getting all these games is, I mean, you get the game. Right? Then you gotta spend like four hours clipping the game. And you know, so you don't get to actually play as much. So that's the only problem. So I got this one, I got flying colors coming in, and I got one special one coming. And that should be it for a little while, actually, to be honest. Uh so But I said that last time too. <laughs> Anyways, that's Holland 44. Don't forget today, guys, at 4 o'clock p.m. Eastern Standard Time, we're going to be talking with Rough Swordsman, Tony's Board Life, and we'll get to talk all about this stuff. Counter clipping, and getting new packages, and what we've got ordered, and anything new we've gotten. And We're going to talk D-Day at, uh, at Peleliu, because Tony just got done playing that and we're going to find out his experience and his thoughts about the game and uh and then we'll talk about the Seminich's games and see if uh this might be something that's doable and getting on the table although like i said um i'm looking for maybe at like an east front game anyways that's that's neither here nor there anyways uh all right guys well we will see you all today, 4 o'clock p.m. Eastern Standard Time, right here, Russ Swordsman, our Wargamer, and Tony's Board Live for some great chat and talk. So, come on by. Let us know. 
Uh, Jay says, IDJ, I can't believe you will stop ordering new packages. Ha ha ha, keep your stream flowing. The postman loves you. <laughs> I know, I know there will probably be something I see. I've already seen something, all right? So, uh, Rough Swordsman Wargamer did a live unboxing of the Men at Irons Tri-Pack. Ooh, and I'm like, damn, that might be one I would like because, because why, okay? Because the maps are smaller, right? You can get those on, you can physically get those on my table. Uh, even the, the bigger maps aren't the, you know, like the full size Holland map. It's, it's more like the, the smaller sized uh, maps. The counter density isn't pretty high. And you get a ton of scenarios, and you know, once you learn the system, you there's like ten different games in the system. So, <laughs> uh, so yeah, I know. I like, I really like that tri pack. I had men ironed uh, in my collection before, and it was a pretty good game. And I thought, damn, maybe I should get the tri pack. It just came out. But, uh, I don't know. Anyways, all right, guys. See you later. The C3i Magazine was a smaller scenario for Holland 44. You can find it on BGG. Oh, really? Really? I might have to check that out. So, thanks, Jay, for that information. We'll see you guys. Thanks for stopping by. I appreciate it. Everyone have a good day. We'll see you at 4 o'clock. Take care, guys.